tachycardia, having females, 65% of them are the ones who have AVNRT. So what is AVNRT standing for? Anyone would like to say? So AVNRT is the one which stands for atrioventricular nodal reentry tachycardia. So there is a reentry mechanism. So there has to be a fast pathway, there has to be a slow pathway. So this is how electrical impulse is going to conduct. However, due to this, uh, as I already said, different pathways, what is going to, slow pathway is the one which has faster risk recovery time. However, the fast conduction pathway is the one which has slow recovery time. So, um, in fact, they also try to see uh, on a microscopic or histopathological basis. However, they have not been able to demonstrate it. So what happens is, uh, so it, it has been more of EP concept only, electrophysiological concept. So what you are trying to do is, you are trying to give a premature beat impulse. So which is going to uh, block the fast conduction pathway, which has a slower recovery time. However, it is going to still conduct through the slow conduction pathway. So this is the reason why you try to use a premature beat because you're trying to trigger the arrhythmia, okay? And uh, as I said it, so you're trying to block in the uh, fast pathway and it will still travel down the slow conduction pathway only and then the tachycardia will be getting induced in fact. And uh, and what will happen is, and of course, because there is a re-entry, what is happening is, so and true greatly, it was, this was already blocked, right? because you already reached the, uh, due to the slower recovery. So what happens, this, it will go conduct down, go this way, and this will again come back, okay? So when it arrives at the top of the fast pathway, it, it, has, it already finds that, okay, slow pathway has recovered. And that is why, then again it will go up, and again it will start going down. So this is the mechanism. So did you understand? The mechanism. So what happens, as I already said, it is when this pathway is, is electrical stimulus is coming over here, a premature one. So due to the slow recovery of the fast conduction pathway, it will be not getting transmitted down. However, because the slow pathway is the one which has the fast recovery, it goes down and then goes up as well. And due to, because it has already recovered due to the quick recovery, and this is how the re-entry is going to happen, in fact, over here. Now in the circuit, uh, yeah, so this is the normal, you know, uh, sinus rhythm, I would say, no, sinus rhythm beat. So what you will notice over here is, this is going down over here, across the fast pathway, but however, due to the longer refractive period of the slow pathway, it doesn't go up, and this is then, you get a normal rhythm like this. However, as I already showed you the circuit, this is how you get the tachycardia. So, when you are trying to see on a practical ground, practical ground means um, on the histopathological side, this is how the are the sites, the anatomical sites, uh, the fast pathways over here, this is the soap pathway in fact over here. So, this is what is called as a triangle of cock. So, what is the triangle of cock over here? It's very important to understand, very important to understand in the sense. So it has three different borders. You should be able to understand this very well. So this is the tricuspid valve annulus. Here is the coronary sinus. And this is the slow pathway. Okay, so through which re-entry is happening. Yeah, and this is the fast pathway which is pretty much above the AV node over here. So why you should try to have is because in this AV nodal re tachycardia as well, you are trying to target is the slow pathway, not this fast pathway. If you target this pathway, normal conduction is going to disturb and the patient is going to land up in the complete heart block, in fact. So as I already said, it is this is the reason uh, in this arrhythmia, what happens is the you are trying to give those premature beats to block the fast pathway anterogradely and the and conducts down the slow pathway in fact okay 
The fast pathway, I already said it is, yes, it has fast conduction pathway, long refractory period. That is why it will be having a slower uh, recovery, in fact. However, the slow pathway is, slow conduction is going to happen. Okay. So, yes, in this, however, if someone is having a bundle branch block, it is not going to affect the cycle length. This is a very important concept. You, which you will understand. So whenever we are talking about the Kumil's law, Kumil's law, I think we'll try to speak whenever we are trying to deal with the AVRTs. So <clears throat> AVNRT does have different types as well in terms of like slow, fast, fast, slow, otherwise slow, slow. And I know there are some electrophysiologists as well um, who even talk like five types of AVNRT. But most commonly I have seen is like, yeah, three types in fact. Okay. So now, what is the typical one? Typical one is the one, slow, fast tachycardia. The rate is like almost 150, 250. So it is pretty quick in fact. It is pretty fast. And the RP interval is very short. So we will show you some examples as well. However, the atypical AVNRT is the one in which it is long RP tachycardia. Okay. And uh, yes, uh, the the RP interval is more than 100 milliseconds, in fact, okay? Sorry. So this is how is the ECG. So what do you notice over here in the ECG? As I already said, it, the 2-3 AVF, 2-3 there is pseudo S wave and pseudo R dash in the V1. So which is characteristic of this tachycardia. So one of the characteristic things of induction is uh, you will notice is the AH jump. AH jump, for example, if this is the A wave H, AH. However, in the next beat, what had happened is this is like 246, 396. So the, it is more than 50 milliseconds of the gap over here. Oh, sorry. So the interval from here to here was 246 and then Later on in this one, what is happening is 386. So there is a gap of more than 140, 140 milliseconds. So this is what is called as a characteristic AH jump. So that is why you try to do this, you try to go and ablate in the slow pathway. In fact, this is a step-by-step -step approach. You should take the baseline intervals to the burst V pacing try to look, in fact, how is the VA intervals going concentric, eccentric, you know, going through the node or through the pathway, in fact, you should decrease the cycle until you achieve a VA venker back. Similarly, if the extra stimuli from the V, keep on looking at the A activation pattern, which is resulting due to the S2, in fact, okay? And then auto-decrease the S2 till you reach the VA nodal effective refraction period. And then you should also is do is the burst space A. Burst space A, you have to keep on decreasing the cycle till the AV wake back is achieved. Similarly, and then you have to keep on looking as well for the pre-excitation bundle branch block, right bundle branch or left bundle branch block, which may be adding or happening as well. After the burst spacing has been done, you try to do the extra stimulus spacing and keep on measuring for the AH job, okay, and the echo beats as well. So a lot of times, uh, sometimes even after doing all these things, you may need a drug stimulation. Drug stimulation in the sense you will have to use uh, isoprenaline. Otherwise, even a tropin as well, you will have to notice. So after that, you have been able to induce the tachycardia. You have to try to see for the tachycardia cycle length. After you did that, then you try to entrain from the V. Okay. So always whenever you're trying to burst space from the V, for the entrainment, try to pace it at like 20 to 30 milliseconds, which is lesser than tachycardia, at least for 8 to 10 beats, and then stop. Okay? And then you can also similarly also entrain from the A as well. Okay? And then see, how is the response? Similarly, you should also give a his synchronized premature ventricular complex as well. So, so what you do is, you have to start the sync pace, okay? So in the uh, when you start that, 
then after that you have to measure the AA interval. Okay, so whenever you are doing that and you have to keep on seeing is the A is getting pulled in or not. So this is what is for the his synchronized pacing you have to do. Similarly, during the tachycardia termination, you again also have to notice, okay, whenever you are pacing, doing the burst pacing from the V at 20 to 30 milliseconds, similarly from the A as well, 20 to 30 milliseconds, lesser. And then you have to go finally do the mapping. Mapping, as I said it, you have to go around the Cox triangle, you have to look for these to V ratio, without any his deflection and then you have to update. There are exceptions. See, medicine is the field of exceptions. I have updated some cases in which I had to even risk with having his deflection as well. I was able to update it and yes, without any problems so far. Okay. Uh, and then comes uh, that, uh, yes. Um, okay, once you were able to get a good spot, so during ablation as well, so what you do is, you have to keep on uh, getting a bigger V and a smaller A. The ideal ratio is 3 is to 1, in fact. Okay, and uh, whenever you, even during ablation, you have to keep on uh, noticing there is a retrograde conduction as well. And you should try to see is the ideal junctional rhythm is slow junctional rhythm is the ideal response. If there is faster, you should always stop. There is otherwise chances of patient going into complete heart block as well. Similarly, after the ablation has been done, you should again try to repeat the pacing protocol through which induction had happened. So let's try to give you a practical example. So what is happening over here is, this is the sinus rhythm. Okay. So you try to do all those basic measurements. If you will look carefully over here. Then after that, you start pacing from the right ventricle, the right ventricle apic, apical catheter. So after that, what you notice over here is you start taking those measurements as well. You're trying to induce the arrhythmia. So, but what happens over here? So this is what is called as a AV nodal echo, echo beat. So this is classical for a uh, this could be indicated for a reentry mechanism, most likely AV nodal reentry. So similarly, you are trying to do the extra stimulus pacing. So you try to see for the AV nodal effective refractory period, and then what is happening over here is, hmm, and finally over here, the ta so the tachycardia starts. So the, what, how is this tachycardia and? Because this are after the pacing, so how do you differentiate between the pacing and the tachycardia? So if you look carefully, the, here you are able to see those pacing, hmm? isn't it? So the pacing was being done over here, and this is happening from this coronary sinus actually, and then the tachycardia sustains. So how, what type of tachycardia this is? So this is a short V or short RP tachycardia which is less than 70 milliseconds. Okay, so on surface ECG, you are trying to having a look. Yes, it mimics the clinical tachycardia. So then you start doing the RV apical pacing. RV apical pacing you are doing. This is the last pace beat. Okay, you are trying to see what is the response. So this classical response is called as the V A his V, V A his V, RV intrauterine response. So this is again characteristic for the even nodal ring atrial tachycardia. If it would be an atrial tachycardia, V A A V. If it would been a accessory pathway, V A V. You will not be able to see the his over there. Okay. Okay. So later on, you are trying to do is the pacing from the ventricle. So you notice every big, every V is being associated with a V, A, V, A, V, A. So there is V, A linking in fact as well. This is what is called as the V, A linking. This is again, the pacing is happening over here. And so you're now starting to place your catheter 
seeing the fluoroscopic guidance. So what do you notice? There is a big V, small a. So this is like a good ablation signal. And then you start ablating. So, so what do you notice? This is a junctional rhythm. And this is slow junctional rhythm. So this is what is called as the classical ideal response, in fact. However, after that, you continued burning. So then over here, something happened. Over here, something happened. So you were touching. The slow pathway was doing ablating, yes. But you were also touching the fast pathway. This is the reason you had to immediately turn off the RF. So then you waited for some time. Okay, so the A beats was not being seen, but later on it started to come back. So, okay, uh, you try to, you're now after that, you're trying to reduce. So for the reinduction, what you're doing is, you check the AV nodal effective refractory period, and also the AV Venke back as well. And you try to even give the isoprenaline medication as well. You try to do again pacing those maneuvers and all. You still couldn't induce. You try to again check the, uh, the intervals. So a lot of people will be asking, where do you ablate? So this is the area. On the fluoroscopy, if you'll try to see, this is the position of the slow pathway, in fact. So we had already said it. So a lot of people will be asking, what? shall we be seeing what kind of signals we should try to look for during the AVNRT ablation. So as I said it is, uh, whenever you are ablating the slow pathway junctional rhythm is going to be present. And in these junctional rhythms always try to look out for AV dissociation. If there is AV dissociation immediately stop. You are at a wrong place and you can cause uh, a block which is going to be dangerous for the patient. So that is why, that is one of the really, really important things. So whenever there is AV block, okay, you stop seeing A's in fact, during the ablation, you must always stop it, okay. So that is always one of the key things in fact. Uh, so similarly, uh, a lot of times as well, when you are ablating as well, but uh, you see that AH is getting prolonged, right, over here. Similarly, that is again an indirect sign that you should stop, immediately stop. So now I think we all have understood well about the basics for the AVNRT. So there is another reentry tachycardia which tends to happen using the accessory pathway. So using the accessory pathway the, for the other tachycardia, so that is the reason why it is called as atrioventricular reentry tachycardia. So about this, we are going to deal in the next session, okay? So are there any questions so far?